Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chisom G. If you haven't already, before you even watch this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and do the needful. Um, today, I have a, a very special guest, Muna Matife, with me here. Let's give her Hello. a round of applause. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Muna is a rising M4, um, otherwise known as a fourth year medical student, um, who is also in the same program, seven year BSME program as me. Um, and she's here to chat with me um, about a topic that I think is very crucial, um, especially for those in BSME programs, those who are deciding um, what to do after graduating college. Um, maybe you're deciding whether or not you should take a gap year. Maybe you're thinking about whether or not you should just go straight through and just do it head on. Um, so today we're really just going to talk about um, the struggles that we've had, you know, going from high school to a medical school, um, the importance and the, I guess, the importance of a gap year, and also our self-discovery journey <laughs> throughout the past seven <laughs> years, because it's been, it's been a journey. That's all I can say. So Muna, is there anything that you'd like to share about yourself? Um, yeah, I think you did a good job of introducing me. Um, so like Lada said, my name's Muna. Um, interestingly, so my full name is Muna Chimso. So we're sort of kind of, kind of, sort of namesakes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like the Chimso at the end of my name is essentially the same thing as Chisom. And the M at the end of your name is like the M at the end, at the beginning yeah. of my name. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I... I'm in the same program. I took a year off after my third year. And so I would be graduating this year, um, but I will be graduating next year, going into my final year, starting this coming summer. So yeah, kind of nervous and excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how has this gap year been for you? Um... Uh, it's been okay. Like I, it's been, I mean, I'm glad that I took it. Like I, I think that at, you know, it's almost ending mm -hmm. and I can still say that I'm glad that I took it, which is a good thing. Yeah. And it hasn't been like perfect. I kind of made the decision last minute. Um, I remember you came to yeah. my and you're like, I have something to tell you guys. And I was like, what do you have to tell us? <laughs> yeah. And she it was that. like semi impulsive, but not really. Yeah. Um, so like it wasn't, so because of that, like it wasn't the most like well planned out or well thought out year, I will say. Mm -hmm. um so it wasn't perfect but at the same time like I knew that you know if I didn't take it now like yeah. when would I ever take it and I kind of needed to or I felt like I needed to so yeah yeah so but it's been okay like I, th I think I had a lot of questions going in and I think some of them were answered and some of them weren't but that's like so. And, what's, and what's unique about your gap year too is that you took it after you finished most of your requirements, right? It was after yeah. your applications. Um, yeah, yeah, so exactly. All you have to do is apply for a job. Technically, <laughs> and like, <laughs> Technically and then, yeah. yeah, like I still have a couple things to do. Um, but yeah, I think like, and of course it depends on like what um, your like field looks like or your academic track. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think in our institution, a lot of people um, have taken the, a gap year or have taken a year off if they do, like either right before starting medical school or like halfway in between. So like between like the second and third year, mm -hmm. um, rarely is it. As some people, I think third between third and fourth year, like when I took it is becoming more popular. And then rarely will people take a gap year after fourth year, but I, I've also seen that yeah. like this, so. And yeah. do, you think a, do you think that it would have been better for you to have done it earlier or do you think this was the perfect time to have done it? Do you wish you had done it earlier? Yeah, um, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, uh, I don't necessarily wish that I did it earlier, but I, it's been something that I've been considering in the back of my mind for a long time. And I think that it was more like, you know, when I, when I started, I never really thought this was going to be part of my, like, journey. It wasn't ever, like, something I really even considered, like, oh, this might be a possibility. Yeah. So, well, I feel like I took a gap year for multiple reasons, but 
I think some people around me had already started suggesting that I take time off before I even recognize that I really should consider it. Yeah. So I would say that, like I said, I feel like there's multiple reasons why I took the year off, but for some of those reasons, um, the need to take the time off has been there like for yeah. some time, like it's been there. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite some time. So in that sense, like it's not, a, it's like I said, it, it was a semi-impulsive decision, but it wasn't fully impulsive because it's been something I've been mm-hmm. thinking about for a long time, but I'm glad that I took it now because I feel like I don't have to worry about, you know, as much of the coursework that I would have had to worry about. Yeah. Um, like you said, I just, I have just a little bit left to do and I mainly just have to focus on like, um applying for a job (laughs) residency and everything and so and you know like I guess why I took this year off and like some of the questions I had are more related to like figuring things out would help me now would help me more for like finding a job so I feel like and deciding on a specialty yeah and so I feel like it's it's better for me that I took it closer to when I would actually have to like apply some of those Mm -hmm decisions yeah. or answers that I you know came up with during this time off um so yeah but I think it's a it's a very um person uh dependent thing like or like it's very individualized like some people need to take it earlier some people end up taking it even later than I took the year off and you know there's many different reasons why people take gap years too so yeah. it all depends I guess there isn't a re- I wouldn't say there's a right time or a wrong time to take a gap year yeah. for sure yeah and some people might be wondering what a gap year is mm-hmm. some people probably already know but usually a gap year it's a so you know maybe when you're in college the trajectory or the goal is to finish in four years even the yeah. program that we're in it's seven years right and yeah. so you know, when you start when you start the program, it's like, okay, I'm going to finish in seven years. You never really think, oh, okay, I'm going to take a gap year. I'm going to take a year in between, let's say third and fourth or fourth and fifth or whatever year it is. You Mm -hmm. take a year to basically do other things that isn't necessarily related to your degree. Actually, Mm -hmm. you can. People do research. um, People do more shadowing, have more shadowing experiences in the field that they're interested in. But people usually take that year, I guess, let's say for self-discovery, which we're going to talk about later. They Mm -hmm. use that time to um, do something that they love, like maybe a hobby. I know someone who actually took a gap year and I think she worked with a fashion, she did a fat, like an internship with a fashion, um, company. Mm -hmm. I forgot, but like, it was, it was completely non-related to the medical field. Yeah. Um, That sounds fun. Uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds fun. fun. Some people who actually forced into a gap year just because yeah. they, um, they have to repeat a class or they just have to remediate or they just failed something. So that's one of the requirements of the school for you to take that gap year. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes there could, I think now people, at least in our program, you know, they would call it a prescription year if you mm-hmm. had to take a gap year. <laughs> And the, I don't know how that name came about. I don't know. Yeah, it was a prescription. I even forgot it was, that's the thing, <laughs> to be honest. It just clicked. I was like, wait, actually, you used to be called. Yeah. yeah. So um, usually there was this, I feel like there was a stigma sometimes with taking a prescription year because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you're not with your class anymore. You're with the class below you. Even me, like if I'm going to be totally honest, when you told, when you and several other people wanted to take that gap year, I'm just looking, I'm like, you know, I wish I could take that gap year, but I couldn't. Like, I think it was, I don't know if it was stigma. I don't know if it was pressure. I don't know if it was, um, you know, you know, societal standards or whatever. It's like, you know, like, and also this financial things that have to do with it as well. But for the most part, it's like, I couldn't push myself to take that gap year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy decision to make for sure. Especially if you're making the choice yourself and you have the choice to consider whether or not you want to take it exactly exactly and it's because and also I felt like it it, I came into this program I chose this program because I'm supposed to leave in seven years so (laughs) I deviated from that I was like I don't want to hear (laughs) I don't want to hear but there can actually I feel like there there's actually like a lot of good that could have came out of me possibly taking a gap year and Mm -hmm. I think what I also tried to um 
compensate that not taking the gap year with is I scheduled my fourth year in a way where I could have like a seven month straight. I'm not mm-hmm. in the hospital and I'm okay, that's so like those and vacation blocks. But then even during this time, it's like, wow, like I can just focus on myself. I feel yeah. like an actual human being. I'm so not you're like, like, you've been done for some time then. Yeah, I was done. Um, I took my last um, core rotation in November. Wow. So since then, yeah, I've just been chilling. <laughs> but not everyone has that luxury of like having their schedule in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And I guess for you, is there, what would you say is the importance of a gap year? I mean, I spoke about it, but I haven't really had one. I had a semi, I don't know what to call my, a pseudo, <laughs> a pseudo gap year, but it wasn't really a gap year. It was just some time off. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, like what, like you said, you you pretty much covered like what a gap year is and things like that. I think to put it the most simply, it's like just time off from school. It's almost like a sabbatical for people in the working world, yeah. uh, but not exactly the same thing. Um, the importance of it, I think it depends on a lot of it. Like I said before, is individualized. I think it depends on the person mm-hmm. and, you know, I don't know, like, who I don't know who will see this video like how many different people will see this video but for me and for a lot of people the earliest time that I ever heard of a gap year mm-hmm. is in high school really because there are some people who will even take that gap year as early as between high school and college and so when you think about it like that I think a gap year isn't the importance of a gap year is um to kind of, just for self-improvement really I think yeah. like there's multiple different reasons but I think oftentimes people consider taking a gap year um mm-hmm. because they don't quite feel like they know exactly what they want their next step to be or like their next move to be and they don't want to just jump into it right away so maybe they want to take more time to figure out like who they are so that whatever decision they make next um like reflects who they are properly and it's not just like something that they just kind of went with um and sometimes it's because like and sometimes it's just that you're not quite um ready for the next step like maybe you know that you want your next step to be this particular college or that particular field or you know medical school but you know you're not necessarily as ready as you can be and maybe that's something that you come up with your like on your own or maybe that's something that you get advice from like your mentors about yeah. Sometimes it's like you're not quite academically academically as strong as you could be before starting medical school or before going into the next phase of your like academic journey. Sometimes it's like, you know, even for people in other fields, like maybe you want to develop like more of your language skills, you want to learn a new language or you want to learn like a new like computer skill or something or you want to like for medical school, you want to, you know, shadow more doctors or like get more outside experience that can help um, Mm -hmm. strengthen your time while you're in the school, um, Mm -hmm. the school process. So yeah, I think it depends. Like it could be that you just want to improve like your skill set. It could be that you're just not really sure what you want to do. And Mm -hmm. so you're exploring widely what, you know, all the different options available to you. And that's if the gap year is like, a more voluntary like thing that you chose to do like you were saying before like some people have to take a gap year kind of and it's not really in their control like mm-hmm. maybe it's something like you said like maybe you were you had some academic struggles and you failed a class or you, you needed to remediate it and so you needed to take that year off because you need to like cope with like you know strengthening your academic performance for the next year or maybe the class is only offered once a year. So you, you just have to wait without having any other choice. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, something more serious, like you get a new medical diagnosis or there's someone in your family yeah, who medical. falls ill or you're moving half of the half away across the country or the world. And like, you, you just need that time off um, for something that wasn't really planned, but, you know, just needs, just needs you to take that time off. So it really depends on like why you're taking the year off. Um, yeah, I mean, some people take time off to like start a new company or like explore a different passion or 
And even the pandemic was a new reason why people were taking a year off. I feel like a lot of people who are either starting like a new medical school or starting college or something when the pandemic hit were like, I'm going to take the time off and reevaluate just like how everyone else was reevaluating yeah. um, in the world. So yeah, there's multiple different reasons. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, um, taking a gap year was important because like for me personally, it was more of not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. Like, obviously I'm in medical school. So, you know, the, the idea is to finish medical school and be a practicing physician. So that much I know, yeah. but, it, but one thing you learn when you go to medical school um, is that medicine is a lot more vast than you realize. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's a lot more involved and it, 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 it like spins out in a lot more different ways than you, than you ever really are taught about before making the decision to go to medical school. So having learned all that, I, I guess having learned all that now made me less certain <laughs> about what I wanted to do at the end of medical school, which can happen sometimes when you get more information. And there's usually so, not enough time to, to really decide. Yeah. Unless like you're an M, maybe you had a special, maybe you, you have enough connections to have been exposed to certain fields. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Like, but for the most part, they're always telling you, wait on to third year on to do rotations. But then usually third year, you only have those six core rotations that you're around. Um, yeah. The rest, it's you like ophthalmology, dermatology, those things you don't really know about unless someone tells you about it. Mm -hmm. And then you get exposed that way. Um, yeah, exactly. So usually by the time you're exposed to it third year, it's, it's too late. You should have been doing, you usually have to take a, a year. A, yeah. A year. You, you're kind of forced to take a gap year as well because you need to do more research in order to be yeah. more competitive for that field. But yeah, continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, and because of that, or like, that's part of why um, it really depends. Like on the, like for me, like I said, um, part of it was just trying to figure out what I want to do. And so um, you know, you need time to do that. Cause this is not like, this is, like, this is a big life decision that you're going to make. It's no longer, um, just going from one grade to the next. Um, there was a medical student from a different school that I came across recently. And she said something to me that like really just opened my eyes a little bit more. Like this was already after I took the year off, but there was a part of me that was like, oh, like, second guessing myself, I guess, like, did I make the right decision? Or like, should I have just gone straight through? And what if at the end of the day, like, I still end up going into a specialty that I don't really like, or I end up like, um, you know, taking that next step, and that next step isn't any more enlightened than if I didn't take the year off. And she was like, it's fine. Like, this is your life. And she was like, this is no longer when we were younger and you're going from third grade to fourth grade yeah. to fifth grade. She was like, like part of that stigma that you were talking about earlier is this idea that it's the same stigma that exists when you're younger. And it's like, oh, exactly. you got left back. Yeah. Exactly. Like you got left back. Like you're supposed to go to that's fifth grade and you, term to use yeah, that. you didn't get, you didn't go straight. So that's, it's that same stigma, but she was like, you don't have to feel that. Cause like, this is about you're trying to figure out your career you're trying to figure out like what you're gonna where you're gonna work and and what you're gonna do with the rest of your life so you know especially like in our society like you they make you think like society will have you believe like you have to make that decision overnight yeah but you really don't and go 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 to, culture. exactly like you really don't have to make it that fast and chances are if you want to make the best decision for yourself is not going to happen that fast. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, one of the reasons why I took time off was to try and like clarify, like what it is that I actually want to do with this medical degree once I'm done. Yeah. Um, and then also why I took this time off was I just felt like I needed a break. Yeah. Um, I felt like I just needed like a mental health break really. Um, Cause I was just exhausted. I think academically I was exhausted. Emotionally I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take this time off to kind of recenter yeah. um, and refocus. Cause I was just, I was going on autopilot for so long and I was kind of tired of going on autopilot. 
Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> honestly, when, when you told me that you're taking the year off, I was so happy for you. Yeah. I was like, I wish I could do that. But <laughs> I was like, I'm so happy for you. I'm like, thank you. Like, I'm glad you made that decision. Yes, you know, so I've, I've seen Muna. I've seen Muna in class. I've seen <laughs> Muna was functioning. And I feel like you definitely needed this break. Yeah, I was just, I was just, I was a zombie for some time. Like, there's really no reason why I even should have gotten as far as I did. Like, I, I'm serious. Like, I'm just great. Like, you know, I'm just grateful to God because it's really, it really like, you know, proves yeah. that God is with me because there's really no reason based off of the way I was going, based off of how exhausted I was, how little effort I was giving, you know, like how like out of it I was, like there's no reason why I should have had uh, uh, out of this my exams, like step one, there's no reason why. I was woefully unprepared for that. <laughs> There's no reason why I should have passed that. There's no reason why I should. And like, I, I, for the most part, you know, went through all yeah. of the first six years of this program. You probably could have continued to with fourth year, but just, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You, like I, like I went through without having any like, um, like huge or like, you know, we all like had academic struggle struggles, but without having any significant, like course altering yeah. um academic issues like I didn't fail any classes I didn't have anything like that um which is just remarkable yeah. but at the same time so I know that I could have probably kept going straight and I would have been fine but I just didn't want to keep going on autopilot yeah. so I was like I, I need to re frame I need to recalibrate I was just I was like I need to stop <laughs> I just need to stop and what about for those who like who can't necessarily afford like you know I'm not I don't come oh, from yeah, that's a poor, a poor background or anything but it's just like the fact that in my head is like you know I need to you know most of us took out loans also for medical school right yeah. like you know your family they help you but they don't you want to be able to be on your own because yeah you can't just always depend on your family or your parents for um forever right and then the thing I think with I guess prescription years or like schools telling students oh just take a year go and travel go and find yourself you know some people can actually <laughs> afford to actually do traveling that. and do whatever it is that they need they even have to use that time to work even more so I guess what would you say would you say that you got um, aid from the school would you say that the school I guess was supportive in terms of um, providing the financial needs um, that you might have needed but I, I mean maybe you didn't even need it but like maybe for someone who who needs that or who yeah. considering that before even taking a gap year or who doesn't want to take a gap year because of those, you know, underlying issues. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really um, important thing to talk about that you bring up. I think you have to, you like whether, regardless of whether or not you want to take a year off or you're considering it, you also have to consider like, you know, if you can even do it um, financially speaking and otherwise, so I feel like for me, like I, so right now I'm living at home and yeah. I have been living at home for some time. Like I, I moved back home after the pandemic yeah. and, or like during the pandemic. And that was my plan either way, because the hospitals that we rotate through for third year are like in my hometown. So I was like, I might as well just move back home if I'm going to be going to hospital, if I'm going to be rotating in hospitals that are like within my not within my neighborhood but close enough mm -hmm. so I was like let me just save that money and move back home um so that has been um helpful because I haven't had to worry about like paying rent or things like that um and then as far as like my like my loans um I don't remember all the terms right now but I know like if you are, if you take time off, like you can have your, and even after you graduate, like your loans don't, they're kind of paused, like the interest and everything is paused for like a, a six month grace period. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that six month grace period where um, even though my, um, my loans, like even though I took that time off, I had that grace period. And then because I took a full year off and not just the six months, after the first six months, I had to, um, like, I had to, I forgot the term right now, but basically like you, Consolidate. what? Consolidate? No, like there's a term that basically means like delaying. Forbearance. 
yeah that <laughs> that yeah so I, I basically like chose that answer and which and if you don't have like any um job or any like income or like you prove that like you 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 can't you can't start paying these loans back um you can do you can extend that for like another six months mm -hmm. so that's essentially what I did um but you know like I'm still gonna have to pay it back yeah. and I think I think it's still like it hasn't compounded or whatever the word is yet okay. but it's still accruing stuff so it's still something to consider like do you want to have that additional year where you're adding more interest and stuff um and can you do you have like the support system that can support you taking a year off like for me i'm blessed enough that well first of all i'm blessed enough that my parents were open to the idea they were like you know, <laughs> yeah <laughs> right because sometimes there's it's financial but it's also like do you have the the social and emotional and family support because you know sometimes it's like absolutely not like we won't support that but you know speaking of people who are telling me i should probably take some time off my parents were one of those people who were like you need to take some time off like yeah, they were encouraging you they were encouraging me as early as um like first year medical school and because we're in this combined program the time that we started medical school was also the time that you would be graduating college so that senior itis was there regardless yeah. and it just wasn't allowing me to really perform in medical school <laughs> as best as mm -hmm. i wanted to and it was very apparent so you know they were always in, uh supportive of me taking this time off and then me living at home um also mm -hmm. helped as well and for me just weighing everything out and maybe this is just the part of me that's not really serious about my money yet <laughs> uh, maybe this is a part of me that's a little careless but I was just like okay so another year of extra interest whatever like you know, <laughs> you know like a week it will catch up to me at some point but I was like in this moment right now I I'm I have the privilege to consider putting that aside and focusing on my like I put myself first this time exactly around. like focusing on myself and like my mental health and my my career aspirations or my self-discovery or whatever it is like I, I I'm able to do that um and you know I don't have any kids or anything like that either so <laughs> that helps you know there are some people who have kids and you have to consider exactly. like exactly yeah yeah that's another disclaimer too because we did yeah. like I mean a good amount of our classmates and we don't have kids we're not married. yeah um but then people usually who are in medical school at least in the U.S. they're a bit older and they have a family yeah. so that's something else to think about <laughs> yeah. yeah it really it really yeah. depends on you have to consider like where you are and where you are what you're dealing with at that particular time but also what you what you want for yourself going forward because you know that's another thing I forgot too like the fact that we started the fact that we did this combined program means that we're at baseline we're already um, younger than most medical students yeah, yeah, yeah. and so there are some people who took time off they already kind of took their gap years before yeah. medical school and so they have to consider especially if they especially if they're considering taking a gap year because they want to do something like ophthalmology or orthopedics or you know something that you're not necessarily exposed to within the standard mm -hmm. um, medical school curriculum you know, they have to consider, do I want to take that extra year off to improve my chances of getting into ophthalmology, mm -hmm. but I'm already like 30 something years old because I took time off before medical school. Uh, yeah. And maybe you don't have a kid yet, or you don't have a, you haven't started a family, but you want to, mm -hmm. and you also have to consider that. Yeah. So, you know, many advantages on our side because we're, we're younger. So we, we have time on our side to um, afford or entertain like a, a year off and you know we still have our student status for the most part we're young enough that it's not too crazy to still be leaning on your parents yeah, so. yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so yeah there's that um and then as far as the school like supporting me mm -hmm. um financially they no <laughs> I'm not necessarily you know, I get into that <laughs> I mean, not necessarily, I mean, you know, it's just, you know what? It's, it's relative, it's relative, you know, I mean, I feel like it depends too, like, <laughs> even, even going back to the thing about the stigma around taking time off, I think it, it, it 
the stigma that you may perceive, whether you perceive it internally or externally is also correlated to like why you took the year off. Yeah. And so from the school's perspective, like um, financially, not really. And I also have been working from home, like the, the work that I've been doing in my time off has been home. So I haven't even really needed yeah. uh, financial support from my school. Um, as far as like other support, like just being supportive of the decision in general, I can't tell where they stand, but mm -hmm. I know that, you know, the fact that I kind of elected to take this time off and framed it as like, um, time that I wanted to use to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, clarify things about my career goals, made it a little bit more, I guess, palatable or acceptable. <laughs> or like welcoming than like say if I had no choice and I had yeah. um taken the time off because I was forced because I was mandated to because I, re I needed to remediate something or you know had a medical issue like that also would have had a different type of sympathy around it so it just depends in terms of that kind of support mm -hmm. um I think the only thing the one like one of the reasons why um, your institution support might may or may not get in the way of like your decision to take a time off is because you know as institutions they just naturally are going to care about things like retention rates and graduation rates matriculation rates yeah, all of those things are like metrics that they use to you know show how competitive the school is or like you know how good how strong and especially for our institution, which is pretty young, you know, and is still trying to like, um, is still trying to like find its footing or like prove itself, if that makes sense. Yeah, like exactly. any deviation from um, the four years of medical school and especially, especially any deviation from the seven years that it's advertised as is like a reason why you might get a little side-eyed okay. or you might get a little questioned because it's like, the whole, a, a big part of the program is like, it's seven years. <laughs> so if you don't do it in seven years, it's like, you're kind of messing with mm, their branding, if that makes sense. But at the same time, it really just depends. Yeah, but put yourself first, all right. Put yourself first. <laughs> Definitely put yourself first. Yeah, I was actually also gonna include, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to like, I wanted for us to think about when we were 17, 18 mm -hmm. um, versus now, right? Yeah. Um, would you have would you would you have made the same decision to have gone straight through or do you think you would have preferred to do i mean i'm asking myself this question too would you have preferred to do those you know four years of college you know find yourself and then apply it to medical school and the reason why i asked this question too is because you know in the us it's a bit different like we're actually a bit different from other countries other yeah. countries let's say in nigeria i think in the UK as well. The UK, yeah. yeah. The UK, they do it as well, where if you want to do medicine, it's straight after. In Nigeria, they call it secondary school. I'm not sure if it's called high school in the UK, mm -hmm. but straight after, if you decide you want to do medicine, then you do it for six years or seven years straight. There's no yeah. like, undergrad, find yourself and then apply. It's just yeah. straight through. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, we love finding yourself. <laughs> beautiful terms but right. in reality this is what actually happens in other countries so yeah. do you think looking back you would have done the same thing or do you think you would have taken a year um yeah you've done college and then do medical school or graduate school I think um to answer the question directly <laughs> and it's not easy for me to answer questions directly uh, yeah, <laughs> if, yeah, you, yeah. if you know yeah. me I'm pretty yeah I can ramble but I think to answer the question directly, I wouldn't make the, the same decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, you know, if, when I think about where I was in high school, like if you asked me in high school, like, you know, this seven year program or not, like even if it was just regular, go to a four year college and then go to medical school. If you asked me then, like, would you consider taking time off in between? I would have been like, no, for what? You know, like I would have been like, I know what I want to do. And yeah. just, you know, for the fact that I would say that most of us who are in this program are in this program because we probably considered being, becoming a doctor from a very early age. That makes so, sense. So, yeah. So it's like, if you knew from a very early age that this is something that you wanted to do, like, w w there is no need 
to even take time off and try and figure out because you know you want to be a doctor so you might as well do it's all cut out for you you go to college you go to medical school so what's the point of taking time off um uh but yeah I think having gone through these last seven years or so um and I think it I mean, I realized for me personally that it wasn't the best decision to go straight, but I think it really is still like, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a right way or a wrong way to do it. I think it, it still depends on you and um, like how well you know yourself and what you need, which is hard when you're in high school to have that all figured out. Um, but yeah, I think uh, for me, like I, I've learned that it's not the best to just keep going straight yeah. for me um, because I, and I've been kind of doing that for a long time. Um, and my high school, like my high school wasn't like the most rigorous of high schools, but I would say it was probably more rigorous than like the average American high school. Mm -hmm. And like that rigor and that like hustle culture was also encouraged within the high school. Mm -hmm. So if you if I think about it, like I did all that through high school and then went straight into completing college in three years and then went straight into medical school. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, and then just also me by nature, I'm a very like I I can tend to be, or at least the high school version of me and the undergrad version of me was very like ambitious, I guess, trying to do everything. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our program is already rigorous, but then I was like, let me. <laughs> let me add a minor on top of that you know <laughs> let me add another like fel research fellowship on top of that let me explore this and that and so I really was doing more than I should have been doing yeah. and that kind of like definitely burnt me out a little bit yeah, and so I realized for me that like it would have been better if I had time in between um and I think it just depends. Um, but yeah, I, I um, was speaking to an attending not too recent, I mean, not too long ago. And she's from the UK, actually. And so she was like, oh, how old are you? You know, like, you know, where are you in your medical school? And I was like, oh, I'm 24. I would be graduating this year, but I took the year off, et cetera. And she was like, oh, that's normal for us in the UK. Um, but at the same time, she was like, but you need a break. <laughs> she's like you need a break which I thought was interesting because this is like it's the norm to go straight like we were saying before it's the norm to go straight in a lot of other um like medical school systems a lot of other countries and so for her she went straight but she was like he was even saying that a break. she was even saying you need to take a break um and I feel like uh as I feel like as black women too like mm -hmm. The, like the tendency or and I mean I, this probably has to be fact checked but like the statistics around burnout like many things will show you that black women are particularly susceptible mm -hmm. and so I feel like and she was a a, a black woman physician so she I think that also par probably was part of her perspective mm -hmm. um she was like yeah you can't just keep going like that she was like, it's not going to get easier when you're a mother with kids. It's not going to get easier when you're actually a doctor. She's like, it's worth taking the time off. So yeah, I think I, I, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have gone straight if I had the chance again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question. Oh, I answered my question perfectly. Yeah. Um, to add on to, um, I think being the kind of person, I agree, I actually resonate a lot with when you said that you were very ambitious. You are still very ambitious, but I was the same, well way. That <laughs> I was the same way. And I still am the type of person where like, okay, let's just get this done. All right, next. Like at yeah. the time I wanted to be a medical doctor, like that was my my dream to become, a, to pursue medicine and to become a medical doctor. So then once, when this opportunity was here, I was like, there's no, what's the, what's the what, what else am I looking for? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just do this and be done with it. Um, and then even now, I would say that I'm happy the way things are turning out just because like, I can move on with my life. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. In my head is like, I can move on with my life now. Like I have a yeah. this. In my head is like, I finished this. Okay, let's move on to the next. Right. I'm still that kind of person. Um, but 
I do agree that I don't know if I would have said that I would prefer to do the three years, not three years, four years, and then apply for, I think I would have, I would have thought it was, a, I, I think I would have regretted not doing this. Doing this. Yeah. In hindsight, that's if I stayed in medicine. Okay. If I had decided on something else, or if I had found another interest, then I don't think I would have looked back. But if I had continued with medicine, I think I would have regretted not taking this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But I, but I would have preferred, that's if I were to go into medicine, but I think I would have liked to explore more just to see what my options were like yeah. out there. Um, because even my reasons for going into medicine at the time was to help people, right? And for some reason, my idea of help, helping people at the time and even now is to be able to heal, right? Um, and to be able to do that aspect of um, helping people, healing people. That's how I saw, That's that was my idea of helping people. But who's to say that, you know, during those four years of college, I wouldn't have found something else that also feeds that idea of helping people, but in a different mm-hmm. way. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good point too. Like, and that's where, like, how well you know yourself comes into play because if you know the kind of person you are, if you really understand why, like, you want to do medicine or why, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do, mm-hmm. like, that can also um influence like whether you think taking a year off will be good for you um and then like what you were saying about medicine and going straight through Mm -hmm. one thing I I've been saying to myself a lot pretty recently is that I don't think at least for me I don't think we really appreciate how difficult it is to get into medical school that's what I was saying no that's what I, that's why I was saying if I had continued with medicine yeah I had to go through all that run around I was regretted not doing this I'm like so I had this offer no MCAT <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything on a plot of goals in New York City and yeah. even the other thing what makes our program special too um of course we have our issues but if it was it wasn't until the interview trail um season that I realized how I mean, of course there's stats, but I saw how, I don't know if I should say this, but how white medicine still is, right? Um, So, and there's a lot of medical schools where you won't see as many um, people who look like you in the Mm -hmm. same space. So I think that was one highlight of this place as well. Like I wouldn't, first of all, I would have struggled to take the MCAT (laughs) and then I would have also struggled to find an institution. And it's already difficult to get into medical school. Yeah, It would have been difficult for me to actually get into a school where I can be around people that look like me and who feel a part of me that wants to, you know, be able to relate with them. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of advantages to us having gone through. Yeah. Cause like, and it's like, and um, for me, like I didn't, I didn't, this was the only BSMD program. I applied to I think you applied to more BSMB or like combined mm-hmm. pathways mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so for me it was like this was it was I was this was an option but like my other options were just your regular four-year college and granted that my idea was still to go straight yeah. but like the other places I was considering I was under this impression that I was like I'll go to these places and you know, it'll be fine. Like they'll have the resources for me to be able to get into medical school and et cetera, et cetera. But I, I know people who went to those schools that I thought would give you everything you need to get into medical school and still struggle getting into medical school. So it's like, I'm definitely grateful for this opportunity. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, nothing and nothing and nothing good in life comes easy. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I was even thinking that, I mean, we can definitely come back like in a few years or whatever and then see, because, you know, now that we're done, I think there's more, well, you still have like a year, but Mm -hmm. I feel like you're done. (laughs) Hey, y'all, we're almost there. there. Um, But I think, I think it's just because like, we're still in it. That's yeah. like, okay. I haven't been able to. Well, well, that's our last, you know, topic: self discovery. Have we found ourselves? Mm-hmm. But I think even that question, right? Mm-hmm. Asking, oh, how how did you find yourself during these seven years? I don't even think I can say tell you that I've fully found myself. I think there's still some years. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we're finishing early. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still some years to say, okay, I'm done with medical school and I've had time to now like see the world a little bit more. Right. The time that we're, we're taking now after medical school is that time that people took, I guess, in between college and medical school mm-hmm. to find themselves. But I feel I feel I still like I, I still feel like we're 
we're getting there. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. you feel the same way. Have you, do you feel like you found yourself, like you know what you want? Or do you think it's just something that will be, that's more lifelong? Yeah. Um, I don't think I fully found myself yet. I think, you know, when I t- decided to take this year off, I was like, you know, like literally at the end of, of my third year after that final rotation, I was like, I'm free. Yeah. I'm going to have the time to discover my whole self. I was like, I'm going to be, yeah. I'm going to have this year to do everything. Yeah, it's, it's a term that's thrown around self-discovery, finding yourself. Yeah, self-discovery, finding yourself. Like, find I thought, have you really found yourself? Like, <laughs> I, I can't really honestly sit here and say I have. Like, yeah. I, I think yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would be, I think I would be, uh dishonest to say that I fully found myself and I think I would be selling myself short to say I fully found myself I guess that I guess in that sense I did find myself because I realized how much more involved the process is or I realized like how much longer it can take like I at least I I grew in my in my mindset in that way yeah you know yeah so, I was gonna say this actually I feel like there's two things that add to true like self-discovery I think number one is time I think that's generally it. like you can be you can take the gap year but if it's not your time to like find <laughs> if it's just not the time or like you're just not the right age to have discovered that part of you then yeah. you're not going to discover it and then yeah. secondly I feel like also that what you do with that time that gap year or that time that you're taking to yourself you know there's some people who take that gap year and they they don't really they don't really focus on themselves <laughs> yeah. or they're not really doing things, you know, like reflecting, journaling, yeah. um, meditating. They're not doing things that will enhance that part of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think time and what you do with the time that you're given during that gap year is important. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Like if you, if you didn't have the choice and you had to take the time off, that changes things too. Or like, if you're, you know, took the time off because you have a new diagnosis or like you have something you know more serious to deal with like you might not even have that you might finish that year off and still be just as exhausted as you were when you started or as you know or have as many questions I think that um yeah like when I started I really thought I could figure it out in a year (laughs) but I realized pretty quickly in the time off that a year is not a lot of time. Um, so I think for me, you know, I still have a lot to do. And even like taking the year off or not taking the year off, like you said, the, the time makes a big difference and we're, we're pretty young. So we still have a lot yeah. to go through in life and experience. So I think mm-hmm. either way, like we're all still finding ourselves. And then, you know, you have people like, Michelle Obama, who will tell you that you are in the process of becoming your whole life. <laughs> wow, so, I love it. Mm-hmm. And you, you just have to, I, part of growing and maturing is realizing that. So I wouldn't say I fully found, I wouldn't say I've like done too much self-discovery, honestly. But I think one thing, like for me, my self-discovery journey, part of it has been realizing that it's okay if it takes time like whatever it is like it's okay if it takes time um like to to have or to like start to build the maturity to realize that like things are not necessarily going to go as planned or as you think it would things are not necessarily going to be a straight path um and you know that it's okay if you think it's okay if you plan for something and it ends up taking a lot longer or it looks different. I think for me, accepting those things has been part of my self-discovery journey. Um, And then there was something you had said earlier or you had talked about earlier where you said that, you know, when you were thinking about, when you were talking about like, if you would have taken the time off or that you you wish you you could have taken the time off, um, but you know, you want to stick to that seven years and you, wanted to stay with your class and you know graduate with the class that you started with like that's always something you have to consider too if you're taking a year off like naturally um 
the like naturally I, I knew myself or at least I like in in the time where I was trying to figure out whether to take the year off like I was learning about myself that like that that like sticking to those things like sticking to the seven years or like sticking to the class that I started with like were things that I would had to struggle with or like there were things that were that I was attached to that I was that I found really important and um even in general I think that you know as indecisive as the person that I am like when I make a decision or like when I you know find my group or whatever it is like I hold on pretty pretty tightly like I I don't really waver too much generally speaking and so like even when I decided to join this institution like that those first few weeks I was second guessing myself a lot I was like did I make the right decision but I even though I didn't really even know anyone like that yet you know I didn't really know you guys I was like I've already committed myself to you guys you know I was already I've already made this decision so I have to stick with it so like I feel like generally I realized like I was that kind of person and so I had to you know ask myself why I was like that like why did I feel like I needed to be attached to these things so much and I guess part of my self-discovery process right from the beginning was like learning that it's okay to like yeah detach or it's okay like we it's okay I kept like using this analogy of like being on a train and having like the different carts Mm. that are attached to each other and I was like it's okay if your cart is unhooked and you like go your own way like I had to wow beautiful (laughs) learn that you know I had to like come to that um like I had to arrive at that like understanding so that was something that even early on in the year, I had to work through. So yeah, now I can definitely say like, I understand that we're all on our, we're all on our own journeys. Like we're all doing our own thing. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're, we're not crossing paths anymore or that it doesn't change anything about whatever relationships we built before, et cetera, et cetera. But like, we're all going to go our own way and that's fine. And all of our, even though we all enter this program together and this seven years thing like we're all gonna have our own journeys that is gonna look different for each person so yeah yeah wow thank you muna yeah. <laughs> thank you so much i think that you ended it perfectly <laughs> that conversation very per- like perfectly um i don't know this is there anything else that you want to say i think that was great um i think um, what you're really telling us is that you're, I mean, you discovered yourself in a way, even for you to take that bold step to say that I'm going to take a year off, it took some type of self-discovery. I think yeah. even that, it, it took years for you to come to that decision conclusion as well. Would you, would you say, because I was going to say that even during these seven years, although I haven't taken a gap year, I feel like I have definitely found myself, like I know who I am a lot more. Mm-hmm. I've accepted who I am. And because yeah. of who I am, it's made me, it, it has helped me to make certain decisions right yeah. friendships about the specialty to go into about where I want to what I want to do with my life where I yeah. where I see myself practicing medicine get um so yeah yeah definitely like but I think it, another thing is that you just have to accept when you discover these things about yourself you have to accept it <laughs> yeah that's a big part of it like one thing is realizing it and another thing is accepting it I think you know like I I had mentioned earlier the idea of taking a year off has been something, you know, circulating in my head for a long time. It's been suggested to me, et cetera, et cetera. But it took all this time for me to really like accept that maybe I do need this time off and I should take this time off. Um, and yeah, like part of self-discovery really is not necessarily that you've found all the pieces and you know how to operate perfectly in the world, but it's that you've found what your weaknesses are. Like you've really truly identified where your issues are or, you know, you know, what, what works for you what doesn't and you are no longer like ignoring those things you're figuring out ways to work with those things instead of those things working against you Mm -hmm. so yeah I think self-discovery is definitely not as uh it's definitely a lot more abstract and 
you know, it's a lot more about the little things than we realize it is. Exactly. I was, I was about to say, it's not something that's like, oh, bam, this is who you yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really not. Bam. It's the little steps. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay attention to them. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, I mean, but, you know, tangibly speaking, if there's anything that I did accomplish during this time off that I um, had, you know, been looking to do for a long time, you know, I started therapy so there's that I did start like trying to journal and yeah. and things like that and like and yeah I get back into old stuff too like you know thinking about the things that like I that I enjoyed when I was younger and trying to get back into some of those things like listening to different types of music or just reading etc um just like picking up old interests again and finding new ones too um so yeah like yeah, I, I guess I, I guess that was that's some of the things that I did during this time off that I'm glad that I was able to do. So, Love yeah. It. Love it. Yeah. On that note, thank you so much, Muna, <laughs> for joining me today to talk about gap year, self discovery. You know whether or not we had any regrets about doing a straight program versus taking a break or doing the four four type of. Um, I guess structure in terms of undergrad and medical school yeah um, I truly appreciate it um yeah. I guess if you have any I think I already asked you I didn't release word yeah anything, I, I mean I think if there's any last thing I would say is um like there's no right or wrong way whether you're taking the straight path whether you're taking like the straight path that's been presented to you or it's a lot more windy than the straight path like there's no right or wrong wrong way um just add that. in addition to that straight path a straight path mm-hmm. can also be just going straight from college into medical school right yeah exactly continue. yeah I won't go so, too much into that but continue yeah. yeah so there's that and you know whatever is for you will be for you and um if you are thinking of taking a year off and you know that you know, first of all, ask yourself if it's possible for you, if it's affordable, if it's doable. And so if it's something that's feasible and the only thing that's standing in the way is you trying to figure out whether you actually wanna take that step or not, I would say, don't be afraid. I would say, um, take whatever leaps you need to take, especially Mm -hmm. if you're young, but even if you're older, like, take the leaps, you know, if you're scared a little bit, then you're probably going the right way. Yeah. 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 That's it. Thank you so much, Muna. I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) I think this opportunity and kudos to, you know, continuing to grow your channel and like, Mm -hmm. you know, take on this passion project of yours and everything. So very inspiring. Oh, thank you, Muna. I appreciate it. And tell them to comment, like, subscribe. Do oh, yes. Show. Make sure you do all the things you already know. Yeah. How it works. You already know. <laughs> you already know the platform. Already know. <laughs> the algorithm. I'm done. Like, Bye. comment, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Don't want to miss more. Thanks. And, you know, who knows how these conversations will continue. So, yeah. And I think that it will definitely help a lot of people, this video in particular. Oh, those yeah. who are considering. I think I think it will. I definitely think it will. All right. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye. <laughs>